I know that uh, this is the last resort that's separating you from drinking beer and having a great party. I got 30 minutes, I got a lot of material, I'm going to code live, as you may be seen, because I got Windows machine, which was reinstalled recently. Uh, so I will try to go fast, especially that the presentation was created for Linux. There are some SH scripts, which I'm willing to run under Windows. So we'll be hacking, because it's late. Uh, and it's not fully working with me. I. Okay, uh, first rule of the presentation. If you got any questions, I would say raise your hand, but I don't see anyone, so just shout it out. Okay, thank you. So just raise your hand and ask the question. Second of all, I love the feedback, even if it's not positive. Just send me it on any of the channels. I'm not blogging a lot, but still I read the comments that are there. And I know that I'm talking to the Java guys and I'm talking about JavaScript. Tell, uh, trust me, I'm coming in peace. There's some bottom line in all of that. I don't want to hurt you. So uh, I will try to cut the academia to the very, very short introduction, what the Nashorn is. Uh, Project Nashorn is coming from the something that was called Rhino and scripting engine. It was introduced many, many years ago by Mozilla uh, to the Java platform, and it's basically allowing us developers to run JavaScript on Java. Um, it may sound dumb, but you know. It was introduced in Java 8. It's fully using all of the features that we were given in Java 8. And in my opinion, it's cool. Uh, so it's just another JS runtime. You got Node, you got Nashorn. It's built on top of Java. It's fully Java compatible. You can use all of the Java types inside of the J J JavaScript and the other way around almost. It's not so slow as Rhino was. It's quite fast. And it's um, compatible with modern JavaScript, with ECMAScript 5.1. And it should be really um, updated whenever there's a reason for that. So why to use it? Why we want to be so hipster to run JavaScript on top of a Java? Uh, we did it because we needed a DSL, because we couldn't really take the client and convince him to use just standard language. He wanted to have a metal language. So that was our bottom line. It gave us also a possibility to switch the implementation during the runtime in Java. We used also SGI. We combined both. That was for the historical reasons. However, in my opinion, it's still great. You got a DSL, which has a full uh, access to the JVM in a language that almost any developer on the market is aware of. And it's a quite simple language. We were able to handle it out to the kind of a technical uh, client, and the client was able to start coding his own scripts inside. Or because it's just as cool as uh, laser eye unicorn breeding fire, which is righted by a ninja cat. So yeah, you can find your own reason. It's up to you. All of the, if you will later on search for a code, it's uh, shared on GitHub, and all of the demo names uh, are really referring to the test name. So. First thing first, you should be able to see the code, or if not, then <sighs> let me increase the font. And my Windows is hanging a bit, so sorry for that. Yeah, if you remember the shortcut which I overridden. E presentation mode. Double shift should also find it. Control shift A, okay. Presentation mode. Uh, okay, I, and that's the issue. <laughs> okay. So we got really simple code, and you see the same thing that I do. So it's three lines of code. Uh, first of all, we initialize something that is called script engine, 
which is quite a good name, so it most likely runs scripts. We put a collection of tweets, and those are uh, really tweets that I taken off about the IntelliJ from the Twitter at some point of time. It's, it's a simple collection. And then we ran a script loaded in hacky way because I had to adjust the presentation for Windows, so that's why it's a bit hacky. I load a script by a given name from the uh, sources. So if we are going to run it, and that was general then something will happen. And what will happen actually is, is that my Windows will be slow. Linux is faster on that machine. It will write out a lot of things and end it in 2006. Uh, OK, let's check out why. So we got a JavaScript file called in a way that uh, we passed the name. And what it really does, it's uh, 13 lines of code where we initialize three variables. We don't do it anything with those. We get some function that's being called, but nothing happens really there. We iterate over an array of tweets, which are not declared anywhere. And we print out the body of each tweet. And in the end, we multiply the numbers by 42. OK. So actually, what happens? Uh, Nashorn and the, the whole scripting engine is a thing where you can pass a context and some objects, and we are passing a Java object. Objects created fully in Java into JavaScript, and then we call their properties. And the number which we have in here, 126, is really printed out from Java by this system out print line, because the last statement is being returned. So how cool is that? You call a script in JavaScript. It works on your objects, and those could be any type of an object. Uh, JPA will work, uh, trust me. And don't ask why I tr uh, tested it out. But uh, basically, you can pass anything, and anything will work there, and anything that you will return will be returned, and it works. So uh, it's returning things, but in a very special way. Next one will be more interesting, in my opinion. So again, we initialize uh, script engine by its name, by Nashorn. You could uh, ask for JavaScript, and it most likely, or JS. It would also work. However, if you would run it on the older JVM, it would work in a different way, because most likely you would get Rhino, because Rhino was always there. We load a script, which, which is, again, very, very simple, because I, uh, I like simple things. And in here, we got just two methods in that script, run and do work. Uh, one is printing one message, second one is printing the other message. Uh, then. We do a bit of a Nashorn magic. Let's not go into that. Um, however, from the Nashorn magic, we ask that we want to get something. We want to get an interface called runnable, and we assign it to a type that is to the object that is of a type runnable called action, on which we call run. So what will happen here is that we are going to get in a second, trust me, it's quite fast, it's just this machine. Uh, we'll get a call from inside of JS, which is coming from the run method, uh, followed up by a bit of magic, which is coming from Java. So. And later on, we get another two calls, which are coming from uh, an interface called worker, which is just two empty methods. There is no Java 8 default magic. What actually happens in here under the hood, uh, we tell the Nashorn, please compile the thing uh, and 
convert it to something that's called invocable so we can work on it later on. And we ask it, OK, we know that there, are, there is a chance that there will be an implementation of those two interfaces out there inside of that JavaScript code. Try to match it. It goes, finds the met methods by the name, and just uh, binds it one way or the other. So you can, first of all, pass methods and objects into JavaScript and get inside of uh, Java methods uh, and objects and implementation, new implementations from JavaScript. And all of that can be achieved also by just evaluating strings. OK, we can do some testing. And that's also quite simple. We got a simple script, again, uh, which will run for a second, which will fail. We can test JavaScript uh, scripts. And Nashorn, where, when it will fail, it will tell us that there is some x, z, y, uh, y that it's not defined in a given file, uh, which is quite cool. And it will even tell us that it's at, number, uh, at line number six. So, come on. So actually, at line number six, there is x, z, y, which cannot be found. If we will put a in here, it should work, because it should be seen. Uh, but you never know with JavaScript. So OK, it's slow, but it's working. So what you can achieve with it? You can not only start modularizing your code, you can start using that because it will be kind of a funky. You lose, for example, all of the benefits of statically typed language, which we'll see in a second. You can, for example, start testing your JavaScript assumptions. You can use, of course, one of the JavaScript testing frameworks. However, you got a whole new tool that is well defined and known for you, and you can use it and it will give you a positive feedback about everything that happens there. There is possibility of doing also a validation. Uh, by the way, I messed up. It's validate, not validation. So we got two test methods. One passes some JSON-ish looking like object. Why? Because JSON is really something that it's easy in JavaScript. And it's not so easy in Java. You got like billion of frameworks, but none of them is as good as, Java, as plain JavaScript is at doing some things with the JSON. So we got a one method that validates if that JSON is positive, and second one if doing mostly the same thing. Um, come on. So uh, where you could use it, for example, imagine you got all, your, all of your validation frameworks in place, like Hibernate, like something, like your custom validation strings, uh, Spring, maybe some objects. And you're doing a validation. And then you're doing validation in JavaScript. So you're doing the same thing in two places. You duplicate your logic in many, many things, in many, many aspects. Because you have to check if something is not null here and there. And what will happen if the business uh, rules will change? And this is the, my answer to that. It failed because it should fail, because the test is set in such a way that it will fail. We'll see in a minute why. However, unless I'm running only that one test. If we'll ignore that, everything should be passing. Yeah, we are running both tests. One will be passing, one will be ignored. And if we are going to check it out, then we are validating if the parameter of a name is longer than some number. Usually, if that would change, if we would change it to, I don't know, let's say 20, so we accept long names, then we would have to do it on server side and client side. With it, with the NASHORN, you can just do it in one place. And then with some clever build script, 
you copy your JavaScript somewhere uh, where it can be reachable by your web app, or package the, you package it as a web jar and just share it. So there are kind of a decent, I would say, in my opinion, uh, usage scenarios for many, many things. You can do it also for scripting purposes. That's, that's the hipster part. This is the part where my mind was blown. And baboon to the rescue. If anyone follows me on Twitter, I was doing that yesterday in, at midnight. So what we got in here, we got two scripts. One of them, you have to take it for granted that it's working under the Linux. Second one, I'm willing to show you right now. Uh, those are really only SH scripts. There is not, nothing magical in them. Let's even view those. Um, or not. Um, <laughs> give me a second, unless I remove that from here. OK, then let's view them in the default folder. OK, so basically, what we got in here, uh, this is the shortened version. However, uh, in the long run, if you will use it uh, on Linux, you will pass the uh, whole path to the JJS. And JJS is a really a uh, console where you can evaluate your commands. It's a simple REPL, something that you never had in Java, but maybe one day we'll have it. And you say to it that, yeah, right now we are going to evaluate our code with JJS. This is our execution. We create some objects, cool, and we do some stuff. And basically what it really does, uh, it allows us to fire up, and I hope that it will show up in here, yeah, a window where we have a button with a button logic, which does a very simple thing, which prints out only hello world. OK, um, maybe not the most useful thing in the world, you may think, but if you need to ping your user, do something some, at some point of time, maybe you can combine it with Chrome, because it should be running not in Windows, uh, running on Baboon, running the SH scripts, running the JJS. It should be a bit shorter, and you can get all of the tools that are coming with Linux available for your Java, JavaScript, and you can start working on also other aspects, like, for example, something that I couldn't run because of the funkiness of my environment. However, uh, I, on online, if you will check, it out, check out the code, there is possibility to run the script and it will print out all of the files on the, uh, on the uh, directory from which you are running that. Uh, why? Because it can. Because it has access to all of the commands that your operating system allows. You can start gathering some data about your server, maybe running some scripts periodically. It's up to you. But basically, you can run Java in JavaScript on a server in some scriptish way, which Come on, you could never do it in Java on its own. There's also that thing called Project Avatar. And for me, it was quite bothering, because most of the people were thinking about Nascorn only through it. And Project Avatar is really Node.js written in Java. So there's a single execution loop running uh, for all of the events. It handles all of the events. It's for the web projects. So you can, it's just another web framework. Written in JavaScript on Java, running in Nashorn with some libraries and additional capabilities. But basically, it doesn't differ from uh, Node. And luckily, in my opinion, for all of us, it's dead. Uh, Oracle said, sorry, we are not seeing any valid usage of it for now, and it costs a lot. Uh, there are some valid usages. However, 
we don't want to do a version 2, which they wanted to do, because they wanted to provide a full uh, interoperability with the node, and you could use all of the node uh, NPM modules. However, it was costing too much, so they just resigned. And good, for a good reason. If you look at independent benchmarks, then really, node is this arrow in here. And all above it, almost all above it, a lot of frameworks above it are running on JVM, because JVM is fast. Uh, I don't know who, but someone mentioned that today. You're maybe doing some hipster cool things in Node, but we can do all of those things in Java, and it will be faster. You just need to know which tool to use. It's up to you. However, there are some consequences of using Nashorn. There are some downsides to that, and I won't be telling you any lies. It can be slower, much slower. Uh, so there's also a big difference between Nashorn that just started, the yellow line in, in the middle, and Nashorn that it's already running for some time. Why? Because it's underneath, under the hood. It's using all of the greatness that Java 8 and JIT provides, so it will optimize all the bits and pieces that you will feed to the uh, Nashorn. Uh, also, if you load each script, over and over again from disk, won't cache them, won't com use the compiled version, then most likely you will be on the slow side. And even when it's warm, it may be twice, plus twice slower than Node. So there is some price to pay. However, you can do it everything in Java. So it's slower, but uh, it's not dead. The fact that the Oracle killed Avatar doesn't change anything. In the recent Java, uh, NAS, uh, Java updates, they updated the speed of Nashorn. Um, it's available only on JDK 8. Uh, when we started the project, it wasn't there yet. So we started the project with Rhino, and we were porting uh, Nashorn to Java 7. It's doable, but we didn't trust it enough and it was mission-critical software, so we just dumped it and went with Rhino. However, uh, on Java 7, you got, and all, almost all of the previous ones, you got Rhino, and there is something called DinJS, which I never used, and I think that it's rather dead, because it's not longer extended with Nashorn there. While creating the first version of presentation, I wanted to show the validation of uh, JavaScript in the browser. However, I discovered that uh, Spring Boot was doing some funky stuff with the framework, so uh, with the class loaders most likely, so it wasn't working. It was just a change of a minor version by one, and it suddenly started to work, but you may expect some weird issues. And it's another level of abstraction. So you've got all of your layers in your system, and there's another one. And it's written in different language. So cool, but you know. OK. There are some also trickiness, because you got two different paradigms. Uh, you got Java, which is statically typed, which you always know what will happen there. And in JavaScript, you know, <laughs> you can add arrays to strings, to numbers, and something will happen. No one knows what. Maybe except a couple of the developers that write only JavaScript code. Uh, there is different programming model, different execution model. There's a lot of differences which you have to take under consideration, and you will get those in one code base, which is kind of a tricky thing. And um, you have to convince developers to work with one another and to learn the new way. Okay, from other cool things that we got that should show it, uh, what I was talking about, we got another example where, again, we get the tweets, put them in JavaScript, and we iterate a billion of times, like really a billion of times. 
And I'm, come on. So, while it's compiling, I want to show you something cool, which is coming from IntelliJ. I think that other tools may have it as well. Uh, we got a full debugging support, because IntelliJ provides that for Nashorn. So we set just a breakpoint, and then we can look what's inside, what's happening there. Uh, we can walk through the whole code base, which will be boring because we are iterating like billions of times. Um, but it's quite cool. So there is a tool support. I think that uh, NetBeans also wanted to have it, or maybe even have it. Eclipse? I don't know. Sorry. I'm not using that. Um, okay, so a bunch of things happen in here. We got some numbers, we got some iterations. I won't be boring you to death, especially that we don't have a lot of time left, and I know that the beer is getting warmer. So basically, what we are doing, we are creating a Java array. It's, it's being initialized in very, very weird way, very, very weird way, because JavaScript also has arrays. So you have to take into consideration that some points where basically you are using same constructs may require some hacky things. However, later on, we can iterate over that array, array A, uh, same way that we would do it in, with any other type of array in JavaScript, with fors, for each's, and stuff. To prove it, we are doing the same thing with array B, which is really array in JavaScript. Uh, and then we do some weirdness with lists. So it's doing the same thing. On the very end, we get some numbers and some two-string messages. Uh, the point that I wanted to show you is that it should fail on data.length, but they rec recently had to fix it, because you would get undefined. Uh, when you got some type of in Java, and it looks similar to something that it's in JavaScript, you don't have the ability to look at the type while writing the script, because JavaScript is, well, loosely typed, so sorry. You have to remember what you will find there. And for example, length is being added to the lists, because the data, data is a list coming from uh, the Java. And A uh, is array that we created in JavaScript. So if we would, for example, try to do it as we would do it with the array, um, then it will fail. Because the array, uh, sorry, like we would do it with the list, it will fail. Because list has a size, and you may think that, yeah, I have a list and it's constantly working for me. I'm using the size method, but when I'm touching the array, it suddenly fails. So you have to remember about all of that weirdness while writing that. And the project that I mentioned, I was showing that slide earlier. It was an application that was running on a buildings like uh, this center or the office uh, buildings. So it was controlling all of the lights, all of the, it is controlling because it's still running and it's even in my office. Uh, it's controlling AC, it's controlling uh, the door locks, it's controlling, uh, it could control elevators, basically any kind of a device that you can put into the building. It was, the drivers for that were written in JavaScript, written in a kind of a microservice way where we could do a lot of hacking, we could introduce preprocessors, where we could uh, introduce validation, we could uh, introduce testing. And most of all, uh, what, what was most important for us, we could give it to the user, and the user would simply start writing code, because big advantage of JavaScript, it's easy. And if it can uh, really sustain a building that's huge, that's full of f devices, that's really mission critical for our client, then I believe uh, it should be 
well suited for any tasks. I would ask questions, but the screen, I would allow you to ask questions, but the screen went red. I will be here for the next two days and for the party. So if you got any questions, catch me. If you can send me any feedback, please feel free. Thank you. <laughs>